We all make mistakes in this game from time to time. Uh, some people more often than others, but it's a very complicated game. There's so many currencies and resources to manage. There are just plenty of ways you could go wrong. So today I'm gonna try to talk about uh, several mistakes I think are very easy to make that you definitely should avoid if you're trying to farm in this game efficiently. First thing I wanna talk about is hoarding. Uh, there are some cases where hoarding is right, like with the additive drops events we're having, um, you want to save some of your energy that you would normally spend on one day for when those events are happening. That's just good sense. Uh, but as far as hoarding things like ally points, that is a clear mistake in my opinion. Look, 79 ally points. Whatever you can buy directly with ally points, it doesn't beat the volume purchase of Bronzium data cards. Uh, you're going to get tons of shard drop currency. Uh, you're gonna get uh, bronzium wiring and carbonite circuit board materials over time. And if you're a newer player, you can even get fully crafted carbonites like I just did in my most recent bronzium pack opening session. Uh, if you don't have hot utils, um, someone gave it to me for free and it helps you open the bronzeums really fast. Other than that, you can find an auto clicker macro and try to like click open the bronzeums for 50 minutes or so. Uh, this was me opening 90,000 bronzeums and also uh, doing some of the events lately. This is kind of a poor return, uh, but if you use the proxy evaluator of 100K ally points to 3,925 charge drop currency, uh, even like one data cron, I'm getting more charge drop currency than I would have to spend. This is a terrible buy, by the way. Pretty much all things you can buy with ally points is terrible. Like whatever they have in the shipments, 25K for 10 of these, uh, garbage. Like spend all your ally points, I also think people sh uh, like hoard too much shard shop currency. I have like 14,000. Usually I'm floating right below 10,000. I just did a session though. Uh, but some people save to like 100K, like just in case. What are you saving for? Buy the things you need. Buy the gear 12 pieces. They're hard to come by. Gear 12 plus is a little bit more expensive, but if you are ever passing up on something that you need or is valuable in this, in this store, you are passing up on, you are hoarding wrong. You shouldn't be hoarding that. Another thing, I don't know if people still do this, but people used to hoard, get one and get two currency. And in case you haven't heard, Bo-Katan is coming back, is coming as an epic confrontation character, which used to be a type of character you need to get one to finish off, but you officially do not need that for this one. So there is no need to hoard these currencies. Spend them, get what you need. Uh, I might need to do a currency guide again at some point because I said, Micro attenuators aren't worth it, they are. Uh, just buy the gear 12, gear 12 plus pieces with the get one and get two. Do not hoard it. You're just hurting yourself in the long run uh, by not having the things you actually need in, tr in exchange for things that just sit there and do nothing. First things you want to hoard a little bit, but not too much like credits. I probably, I have way more credits than I need. It's just, I can't really spend them fast enough to get rid of them. I'm always buying them with the raid one currency. Uh, but when you have a lot of credits, I think you should float probably like 50 million or something, just so you're ready for new characters and leveling them up as they come in. Um, but you should always be looking at the mod shop. If you're an end game player, if you're a newer game player, you're gonna need the credits all the time. Uh, and if you're a newer game player, definitely hoard a good amount of credits. Uh, but if you're an end game player, you don't really need to hoard them forever. Just buy mods that you're gonna need. The next mistake I'm gonna talk about that I even make myself is leaving resources on the table. Uh, sometimes this comes in a minor form, like not completing small events like contraband cargo. Yes, it's not too much to an in-game player. You have tons of these materials built up, but me personally, I never have enough shard drop currency. So I do this second to last tier on it. So I get some extra shards. The same thing goes for like fleet mastery that you've already completed. I like the finalizer one. I still do that every time. So I do all of them every time because they actually give a good bit of shard shop currency from it. And that translates to like a few blue med pack, or purple med packs uh, from gear 12 pieces. I even do the endor battle just because all I have to do is hit sim. Galactic bounties, maybe it's not a huge amount, but you get crystals from it. Like don't skip these little events. Um, and then a form of leaving resources on the table that I do, that I consciously choose to do, is I don't hit the raid with my all. I mean, I literally just got tired of it. I, I do one run with Java, try to get over like two and a half, close to a perfect run, as long as I'm over 2.2 million. Uh, they really did me a favor by put it front loading all the currency drops, uh, but I leave on the table about 200, uh, get three every time the raid runs. And I know that that is valuable. That's leaving impulse detectors on the table, uh, like one or two 
per every three days, that's a lot. I just don't feel like doing it. So if I were a perfectly efficient player, I would be changing my mods and hitting this raid up to 6.2 million every time. I don't think I can get 8.51, but see, this is a mistake even I make. And I'm just telling you that it is that, a mistake. Uh, but one way I don't do that, uh, that a lot of people do, is I don't slack on squad arena. I mean, I, but it's so easy now. So many people don't care about it. Uh, you don't get crystals anymore. Uh, not redeem. Um, you don't get crystals anymore, but you get increasingly more uh, squad arena currency, which leads to shard drop currency. I mean, a lot of this is just funneling into shard drop currency. But if I just slacked, fell out of the, like 100 or something, getting 600 every day as opposed to 900 over the course of two days, that's a shipment and a half. That's going to lead to some shard drop currency, which is going to lead to some gear 12 gear I need. Uh, and I only do like one or two battles a day. I've done two just because I enjoy doing some of the battles. I like practicing in Squad Arena. But like I'm literally just a vulture for these little resources. And since I don't have to remod, I just hit auto. I'm not as afraid of doing it as I am with the raid. Stake number three that I think is very common that players make is tunnel vision with your farming plans. Uh, that means, for example, say you're going for Jedi Knight Cal Kestis and you're working up his characters. I have most of these way past what you need for them. You only need a gear 12. I would say you're farming these characters, these shards, and then there's something coming down the pike that you say, okay, I'm not farming for that yet. I'm not farming for Leia yet. And then you just miss opportunities. Like farming character shards takes a long time. Scout Trooper and Nisa have been farmable for a little bit now. If you're an endgame player and you're skipping farming those shards just because you're working on Cal Kestis, that's a mistake. Same thing goes for even like older Galactic Legends, if you're farming Cal Kestis and you're like, oh, I don't want to farm Ray or Lord Vader, I don't want to work on that. Not everything is using the same resource pools. Like if you're just farming something that needs a lot of normal energy and then you're not using like your ship energy to target something else, that's a mistake. Uh, and not seeing the value of things like we have additive drops right now for Captain Drogon, Scout Trooper, Nisa, all that. So I have been taking advantage of that uh, using a lot of mod energy using even up to the 200s right now. That might be the last one. I have another one. But I'm just low on crystals and just hitting this for more Drogon. Like if I was only farming Cal Kestis, this is still something like if you're only farming not Leia, like this is a character that takes a long time to get. These drops are super valuable. You need to take advantage of them. Uh, like you need to be able to evaluate what comes up as it goes. Um, I mean, you still should focus on what your main goal is. Like. If you don't have everything at, if you're not gonna be ready to get them in gear 12, uh, you shouldn't be distracted to do other stuff. Uh, but you can, you can walk and chew gum at the same time. Like use, if you don't need charge up currency for Cal Kestis, cause they don't need a lot of, they don't need gear 12 or gear 12 plus pieces, prep for Leia or something else. Uh, and this it has a vast uh, major, a huge variety of applications in the early game. So it's hard to give examples, um, but don't just focus on, oh, I'm doing this squad now. I can't do anything else. Oh, now I'm doing this squad. Oh, I can't do anything else. Pretty much that is what I'm talking about with Tunnel Vision. And one way recently I didn't really have Tunnel Vision is I decided I wanted to work on Saw Gerrera. Um, and accounting for Cal Kestis, I know when he's coming back, he's coming back this week. I'm going to get ready and have the relics for him. But I realized I'm ahead of schedule and I could get Saw up uh, a few relic levels. Now I, I need like 115 of the first two types of signal data and 75 of the dark blue to get Cal to Relic 7. And then anything past that, I'm going to use it for relics on Saw Gerrera because Saw Gerrera is going to benefit me immediately. I was able to give him Zetas. I can use him in this 3v3. Um, but I wanted to just tap the brakes until I knew I had what I needed. On well, the heels of that, um, the number four mistake that I'm going to talk about is rushing past one bottleneck straight into the next one where it's not going to benefit you at all. I'm going to use the same like Leia character farming as an example. I am not ready to relic up all these characters to relic seven. I don't have even close to the amount. Uh, so yes, I'm farming up their shards. But when I'm done, I'm not going to rush to get them from six to seven stars because I'm not going to be ready to relic them all. I might speed up on one like accelerate shard trooper refresh his node a couple times but i might just go back to doing just one normal refresh on nisa because i think she'll probably be the last one i need to get up uh because i'm not ready to make use of her uh so but scout trooper it would fit well into a variety of teams i have so i might rush his shards 
uh, and then relic him up, and then when I'm ready to relic, relic someone else up, like Drogon to 7 or Nisa, I might accelerate, start farming them more. I can't even farm Drogon right now, it's just like these additive drops have been amazing. Um, but that's what I mean, like if it's going to benefit you to get them to 7 star, that's great. Uh, but if it's not, there's no point. Like, I need all of these at Relic 7 to start farming Leia. Everything else is ready, but if I don't have all of them, there's no need for me to have, like, I'm not really going to use Drogon somewhere else unless I throw him under Saw, which I could, but... Uh, yeah, like, it's just... Yeah, if you see something and you impulse buy it, like, if you're like, oh man, I really want this gear, I can get him to gear 12, but then you're going to get stuck at gear 12 and can't get him to gear 13 and relics, then it's kind of a waste of resources, waste of crystals, waste of money, whatever you're doing. If you're just going to get shop, stop short, it's kind of like... You see a red light coming up, and then you hit the gas really hard, and then you just have to slam the brakes when you get up to the light. That's all it is. Mistake number five is not being prepared for what you know is coming. So I've already talked about that I am ready to get Cal Kestis, but if I'm not ready to gear him up and relic him up, what am I doing? Um, you already saw I had kind of the relic stuff needed, but I need to make sure I have all these gear pieces because if I don't have all of them and I get stopped short, like, and I have to like blow crystals or something, it's going to be embarrassing. So right now I have accounted for that. I, I have all this, all I'm going to need. So once I get Cal, I'll be able to get them up and running. And this is something hard for new players because maybe you used everything you had just to get ready for an event that's been in the journey guide for a while. So if you just got your characters up and running for like the CLS event and then you finish it and you can't gear CLS up, that's a little different because you use all the resources you could just to unlock him. And sitting around waiting to unlock him just because he's there doesn't make sense. Uh, what I'm talking about is with like timed events like Cal Kestis, like Fleet Mastery events. If they're on a clock and they come back here and there, um, you need to be more prepared for it, uh, not just blow all your resources in, resources in the meantime. Um, with Galactic Legends, it's kind of like the example I gave with CLS. I mean, I need to be ready to give all this gear to those three characters that I'm not done with, Nisa, Scout, and Drogon. But if I finish, her off, I finish them off and start farming her tickets, and I'm not ready for... To, like I don't I can't gear her immediately right away but I was doing everything I could to get all her gear and relics ready I don't really feel bad about that because it's like what am I supposed to do just sit with her not unlocked uh, I don't know it doesn't make sense but while you are farming uh, tickets for the Galactic Legends you should be actively working on their gear and check out what that character actually needs um, again Swigadachi-G is a great resource for that just go to the character uh, click on full gear list or you can go to gear levels and just see specifically like what their gear 12 gear is going to be if it helps you visualize it like that way but full gear list is a nice tool like right now i have a lot of kyro tech but like once i unlock cal and not unlock leia it's going to be trained so i got to be prepared for that and those common bottleneck pieces like mark six med packs uh just know what you're getting into and another thing you can get caught off guard and not prepare for is being ready for like a capital ship unlock. You're going to need a lot of these prestige to so try to get up to like 2000 um, in between unlocking capital ships as you will need them, especially at the seven star variant where you use a lot. Uh, and people, certain content creators in the distant past have been very embarrassed by not having enough of this specifically. And not just that, uh, you need more uh, fleet currency and that's hard to come by too or like fleet credits I have just under 10 million you just don't get them in as many sources as the normal credits and I'm more choosy with mo what mods I buy with ship credits just because it takes a lot longer to build up uh, with normal credits I'm much more like spendy with them but you really got to keep an eye on the ship building materials uh, the next one is just kind of straightforward um, it's it's just not using all the 50 refreshes someone commented on a video that they were they got a lot of marauder shards and they were only doing 50 refreshes like or they only did one 50 refresh use them all like that's like even if you don't get a lot of crystals from grand arena you're, you're in like a lower league or something that's like the prime use of crystals like you buy the refreshes buy the 50s on the normal energy 50s on fleet too like you get even if you're like not prepared for gear 12 gear 12 plus characters Farm that stuff. Even if you're done farming characters in ships, you have every single thing on these hard nodes. Some people are just like, oh, well, I farmed all the characters. I farmed all the hard stuff. I'm not going to like farm stuff anymore. No, use the energy. Farm a normal node. Farm, if you want a recommendation, this node. 
uh, Fleet 2E and get some gear. Like, it is an amazing trade-off for those crystals. It's really cheap. Uh, once you get into, like, mods, that's, like, just up to you on your plan. Sometimes I skip those because I just don't feel like it. I'm really strapped for crystals. And Cantina is expensive, I know, but skipping the 50s is just a no is like a no-brainer mistake. Like, just use your 50 refreshes. Mistake number seven is getting distracted, not just by something valuable, but by a half-baked plan. So say I looked at Datacron set number 10 and said, oh, I love, oh, those are some good Wookiee Datacrons. I really want my Wookiees up and running. And my account's not a great example because most stuff is pretty built up. Um, if you were just enticed into something by something temporary like a Datacron, think of how long it'll take you to get there and what it's actually worth to you in the end. So if you like work on all these Wookiees and then you get them up to Relic's minimum level to use that Datacron, but then you'll only get like one or two weeks left in the season and then they fall off after that, they're not as valuable to you, that's really half-baked and you didn't think it through. Um, or if like getting distracted by going for Wookiees like that would take you away from farming a giant eye cow or whatever or lay or whatever you happen to be working on um just pivoting for something that's eh, like the new shiny thing isn't always a good idea especially for lower accounts uh, without as many resources uh, and like getting like farming a lot of unaccelerated characters um it's just more costly for brand new players when there's so much other old stuff that'll be easier for them to get more cost effective but they get distracted going for the shiny new thing it, it's i don't have too many more examples other than that that's just a mistake i think people get sucked into a lot next is taking advice from whether it be a content creator or reddit or a forum or something that's meant for other players in a different stage of the game than you that's meant for end game players a lot this can happen a lot for a mid game player or an early game player because most of the content out there is focused on late game or like there are certain content creators that are all in the late game and their perspective i mean me i am kind of kind of hard to get away from this that's where i'm at i'm at the late game i'm working on lay i'm working on cal like taking that advice, if you don't have like old Galactic Legends, like you don't have Sith Eternal Emperor or something, and you're trying to get Leia because she's brand new, it's harder to get her. She doesn't have accelerated characters. There is a lot of overlap, but it's going to take longer. Like, and when people are saying, oh, it's a no brainer farm Leia and farm Cal, that is dependent on where you are in the game, what else you have. Going for Leviathan is another example. Like, sometimes you are best served not following the trend that a lot of the player base is going because a lot of the player base is super late or in game and they're not going to be doing what's best for you if you're a two million account no you shouldn't be working on leia probably not um it shouldn't be working on cal like they're slow you have tons of other stuff that's right for the picking accelerated doesn't need as much Cairo tech uh, so try to just tailor what you hear think who is this meant for is it meant for me and sift out what is not and number nine, the last one I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to kind of do a little self-roast to make this point, is following old advice or something that has been outdated by something. Now, this is my free-to-play farming guide from May 31st, 2023. It's not old. It shouldn't be outdated. When I made it, I didn't think it would get outdated. But Captain Rex came out after I made this. I had no idea Captain Rex was coming to revitalize the Phoenix I built this guide with the mindset that, okay, Phoenix is terrible. I'm going to make one for people that want to skip Phoenix and just try to use or this. Well, the Jedi team's fine. Like this Ram Rebel team, just like uh, CLS characters with Han Solo thrown in there. Just trying to use that at the beginning. Um, but if I knew Rex was going to come to the game, I would have just stuck with the Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix route. And I pinned a comment uh, to warn people about that, saying I made this when Phoenix still wasn't in the game where is it here we go yeah i've been this comment just saying i think for brand new players phoenix squad with captain rex is the best way to go for the first team because it's super nice um so i i wasn't gonna remake the whole farming guy because i already made this like five months after my first one which i thought was already pretty new and then they changed things up on me with the raid so you got to look at things and the filter of when it came out as far as youtube or reddit or anything when i was a brand new player i used to look at forums and i didn't pay attention to the dates and it was like 2019 and i was reading stuff about ships from 2017 about how big Starlighter was the best ship ever like the best tank and i was kind of wondering i was like huh? and like how chimera was the best uh, uh capital ship 
And at the time I was reading it, it was kind of like the best on its own, but Millennium Falcon was out, so Home 1 was the king of the hill at that time. So just try to keep in mind everything, just filter through when something was made, because it might not actively apply to you anymore. That's it for this one. Uh, not the only mistakes players make uh, in farming, but they were the ones that came to my mind that I wanted to bring up. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think are common farming mistakes that maybe I could highlight in another video later. Um, but if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like, sub, all that stuff. Appreciate it, everyone. See y'all later.